There's no question in my mind today that this is the most affordable all-rounder system that you can buy today. There is no other camera that offers this level of technology, this level of state-of-the-art, and it is state-of-the-art. Nobody else has exceeded this technology in the 35 millimeter hybrid space. Today I'm here to talk about the three-month anniversary of the Nikon Z8. Yes, it was launched on the 10th of May 2023. I got myself one as soon as they came out. I was also lucky enough to have a preview model to test and play with prior to that. The Z8 is an astonishing camera because it gives you so much of what the Z9 has and does for such a lower price point. Of course, the Z9 comes in at five and a half thousand US dollars. Z8 comes in 3,999 US dollars. Yet, pending your use case, you get pretty much almost exactly the same technology. Some of the differences between the Z9 and the Z8 are, for example, capacity to dissipate heat. And as I showed in this video here, you can solve a lot of that simply by adding external power. And that's not a big deal. If you're working in a professional setting as a videographer, there are so many great solutions, for example, from small rig, where external power is exactly how you would go rather than running off the ENEL15 anyway. You're gonna go through those really quickly. Whereas if you have, say, a V-mount battery, one of those things can last you all day long. Heat dissipation, lack of a vertical grip, really, there aren't many differences. Now, we do know there are some differences and they are firmware related differences. For example, we now have auto capture on the Z9. And the reason I bring up the Z9 is the Z9 and the Z8 are absolutely fabulous companions working side by side with each other. And I have now done this in a professional setting for about the last three months. And well, in a word, if you don't wanna watch any more of this video, the two cameras work so well together and if that's the sort of setup that you want, you want controls in the same places, you want files to be identical, and you wanna know exactly what you're getting from each camera, well, that's all you need to know. They work absolutely excellently side by side. And maybe this is your first video regarding the Z8. Well, what is the Z8 all about? Well, it is a 45.7 megapixel BSI stacked sensor and Nikon have done a really cool thing. They have removed the requirement for a mechanical shutter with what they call the shutter shield, which you will see right here. That is the shutter shield. Now, the shutter shield, it protects your sensor every time you want to change lens. That is an awesome addition to any mirrorless camera. To the best of my understanding, there is no other mirrorless camera besides the Z8 and the Z9 on the market today, which gives you a dedicated sensor shield. Some manufacturers allow you to initiate your actual real shutter, these high performance mechanisms as a sensor shield. And to me, that's a little bit of a compromise. So Nikon have brought to us with the Z9 and the Z8, absolutely state of the art technology and still today, as we're passing the 18 month anniversary of the launch of the Z9, this technology is the same, similar, we, we, to the best of our understanding, it's very much the same. This is still class leading technology. No other manufacturer, Sony, Canon, Panasonic, Leica, Fuji, nobody else has decided to go down this path, giving us a 35 millimeter full frame BSI stacked electronic shutter only sensor. And again, to the best of all of our understandings, this is the fastest readout sensor in the market, still. Now I suppose we would expect Canon, maybe an R1 will come sometime soon. A lot of people are predicting for the 2024 Olympics, which could also mean that we will see an A1 Mark II also for next year's Olympics. 2024. And only then, only then do I think we will see sensors that may surpass the Z8 and the Z9. 
I suppose there's half a chance Canon R5 Mark II might do that, but right now there is no sign of that camera. And next year's Olympics, well, they're about one year away at this point in time, give or take. And thus, this is absolutely still class leading technology. It's the best that you can buy today. And at this price point, getting stacked BSI electronic shutter, at this price point, Nikon have brought something absolutely amazing to the market. And now all their competitors will be attempting to do something similar. So let's talk about it in comparison. And let's talk about the Z8. Well, as I've said, the Z8 is very much a Z9. Very quickly looking at some of the highlight specs, 45.7 megapixels, 20 frames per second in RAW, which gives you everything. Full autofocus, full exposure. And then we get even faster. We can do 60 frames per second in APS-C, full autofocus, full exposure. That's in JPEG. And if you want to shoot at 120 frames per second, you can. It is full frame, 11 megapixels with full autofocus and full exposure. And this is the same, identical for the Z8 and the Z9. And that is the photography spec. I've made many videos about this. I recently compared the Z7, you can see it here, from a dynamic range and picture quality perspective. This camera is up there with Nikon's very best to date. And the differences, which can be seen on paper, just on paper as a specification, as a number on a chart, in the real world it just simply isn't there. And then let's remember, that's base ISO, and then when we get to 640 ISO, the Z8, Z9 is actually better than the D850, the Z7, and the Z7 II. So really, this sensor is absolutely astounding. You get a high-speed sensor. You get a sensor that has the dynamic range to be able to capture all sorts of stills opportunities up there with the best that Nikon has had to offer. And it's fast, and it's got a shield. And then let's talk about the video. The video is where this equation kind of goes next level. At the price point that this camera is at, you are getting a machine that gives you 35 millimeter in 8K. But not just 8K, you can get H.265 at 10 bit and at 8 bit, but you can get RAW. And the RAW uses the full width of the sensor, taking you out to 8.3K, allowing you to shoot from 24 to 60 frames per second in RAW with higher dynamic range. This is so much power, so much capacity to capture the world around you in 8K if you want to. But like this very video here, we are shooting in 8K so I can do this, cropping. And I can crop up to 200%. And that's super powerful. Right now it's just me, two cameras, a microphone, a tripod, and the truth. There is no camera operator here. There is no sound operator here. So to be able to jump in and out like that, and also to be able to perform a slow zoom like this. This is really cool stuff and you're able to do it in camera. And here I have tested it multiple times. You can even do this with H.265 10 bit on your SD card and you can even do it on an SD UHS one card. You can create and do stills at high frame rates. You can go slow frame rates. You've got plenty of dynamic range and you can shoot any video that you want to shoot and it's super duper flexible. And let's just touch on those card slots. I absolutely know for sure that some people would have preferred two CF Express Type B. And I get it. I get that. But I also get the decision that's made here. This decision gives you the capacity to get a card, to buy a card anywhere and have a get out of jail free card. You can be anywhere in the world and you can buy an SD card. That's kind of where it's up to at this point in time. So this means this camera is always operational, always. You're always gonna be able to find a card. It's just everywhere. You know, even my cars have SD cards in them to update the navigation systems. I could probably pull one of those cards out, stick it in here and format it, and I'd be up and running. And thus, what we have here in the Z8 with the small rig cage on it, what we have here 
is the ultimate all-rounder at a price point which is pretty accessible and look I get that the price point is not for everybody of course it's not for everybody and that's why we have the Z62, the Z72, the Z50, the Z5 and all of the new potential cameras that will come which will have they will have a lot of this technology in them absolutely I don't think they'll shoot 8k maybe they'll shoot stills as fast it's hard to say for those that can spring for this camera and already in this country there is already opportunities to buy the Z8 at cheaper than its launch price I've seen it for between 5 and 10 percent cheaper than its launch price there's no question in my mind today that this is the most affordable all-rounder system that you can buy there is no other camera that offers this level of technology this level of state-of-the-art and it is state-of-the-art nobody else has exceeded this technology in the 35 millimeter hybrid space nobody's done it like I said I think our next best opportunity is still around about a year away at next year's Olympics and it can literally do everything 8k video high frame rate stills amazing autofocus system so the bottom line is from my perspective if you're thinking about getting this camera because obviously if you've got one you know how good it is you know that already if you're thinking about getting this camera here you're either in the Z system or maybe you're in another system maybe you're a Fuji user thinking of going full frame this does everything there's nothing it doesn't do and I'd like to end here by talking about firmware now with the Z9 which we are shooting on right here in 8k h265 10 bit this camera is now up to its fourth major firmware upgrade four now we have no idea how long this is going to go on for but I will continue to suggest that Nikon designed the XP7 platform to be modular this camera is more like a computer with a camera as part of it than it is a camera with a computer to run a few aspects of it so what this says to me is anything that they can think of and that they are willing to add that can fit within the memory available then we can see these apps these concepts these new features added for example auto capture was something amazing added to the Z9 now really my logical brain says to me anything that can be on a Z9 can be on a Z8 from a technology perspective and it will only be Nikon's desire to separate these two cameras which might see separation and it's possible it's possible that Nikon are still trying to understand what the market will bear in regards to this it's possible they'll make the cameras similar it's also possible that they don't and either is fair either is fair from my perspective this camera is significantly cheaper so should it have all the features of the Z9 well maybe not even so it would be possible and then again they might keep things in parity as best as they can now I would suspect that the two operating systems even so they're the same operating system the versions of the operating system for Z8 and Z9 are being developed separately and this is why we might see some variation in features moving forwards and that just may continue for the lifetime of these cameras and again to me that's okay if you purchase a Z9 then you purchase the Z9 based on what it is the day you purchase it you purchase a Z8 you purchase it for the same reason based on the features today that come with it which are a lot of features might I add so make the choice based on today don't necessarily make it based on the hope of future firmware updates because we have no idea but one way to keep the Z9 super duper relevant and I feel like this is how Nikon are thinking is just keep bringing us more firmware through the life of the camera let's say the camera has a four to five year lifespan something like that they might continue to give us firmware for three of that four to five years and that would make and when I say firmware I mean updating and that would make the Z9 and if they do the same thing for the Z8 platform that would make both of these cameras ridiculously powerful and ridiculously relevant for their entire life cycle and if we look at the fact that 
every Z camera has had some degree of firmware update, some more than others. Nikon are working on all of them. And, and let's not forget, the Xpeed 6 processor was not designed to be as expandable, clearly. It's much slower. Again, to reiterate, we have been told it is 10, the Xpeed 7 is 10 times faster than two Xpeed 6s. So clearly the Xpeed 7 that's in the Z8 and the Z9, way more powerful, way more powerful. Much more can happen with the Xpeed 7. I expect more to come. I expect more firmware for the Z8. Who knows what features? Auto capture was a complete surprise anything could come next one last thing before i go because look this has been an amazing experience i've used it on all my client work for the last three months i shot a lovely little video for a company called swoop aero they make giant drones with wings for delivering medicine and i shot the whole thing on this because i was able to use the mcn 10 through usb number one usb c number one and i was able to bring in power through the usb c power delivery port and this gave me a camera that I could just sit on some legs on a tripod all day long not worry about power never had to touch the camera everything was done from the MCN10 this is a really great single person setup very professional shot everything in 8k which means I can punch in and punch out just a great result and I'm also working I'll, I'm going to make a, a channel update video shortly which will explain a little bit more about this, but I'm also working on a feature film as a production photographer, and I'm using the Z9 and the Z8 side by side on that. So good. Super high powerful, low light, can focus anywhere, dead silent cameras. That's exactly what you want when you're on a film set. Great cameras. And as I mentioned, the two USB-C ports, I think this is an absolutely awesome upgrade and an advancement to camera like this that's really this really says to me it's aimed at the professional space it really says to me it's aimed as a cine camera a cine camera so you can just bring endless power in via that port that's why it's there it's not for stills you don't really need it for stills you just quickly change it but this this is for video and the other thing that bringing the power in this way does is it keeps heat out of the camera so the camera will last longer. It's really well thought out. It's like, okay, we don't have as much heat dissipation in this body. Well, we don't have as big a battery in this body. Sure, that's just the way it is. It's a, it's a smaller bodied camera. It doesn't have a vertical grip. How do we solve two aspects that arise from no vertical grip and a smaller battery? External battery, yay, that brings more power. External battery, that takes away the battery warming up inside the camera, out of the camera doesn't warm up, doesn't happen, doesn't get touched. It's just great. It's really smart. And this is a clear, a clear signal that that is the intention. This, this is a PD port, power delivery only port. Good work. <laughs> it makes complete sense to me. I know there has been a couple of service advisories at this point. That's just life. That's why every product in the world has a warranty. And they do. A car, a watch, a computer, a camera, an armchair, everything has warranties. And there is always the potential for something to happen in manufacturing that just was not anticipated. From my perspective, what's fantastic about what Nikon is doing is that they are acknowledging it, they are covering the costs, they're getting it done, they're getting it fixed. And neither of these things change how wonderful this camera is. Like for me, I've I've had no problems with my mount and I don't even use these things. I've got the Z8 cage for some situations and I have the Peak Design clips to clip on my backpack when I shoot that way and, and I don't use the shoulder straps. So it doesn't even affect all use cases, doesn't even affect all cameras. As I read just yesterday in regards to the lug recall, if you're buying a camera from now on, I can only imagine that everything that's being sent out from the Nikon warehouses are uh, being checked for both of these two issues. If it's even an issue today, because the cameras that the first of us got, you know, the very first versions, mine is like in the early tens based on my serial number, based on this region. These cameras might've been made three or six months ago. Who knows? Of course you want to build up some stock before you ship them out. And now that they've known about these things, Cameras being made now or maybe a month or two ago, moving forwards, they're all going to have been addressed. 
and anything shipping out of a Nikon warehouse, I'm sure, is being addressed. So I would have no concerns about cameras moving forward and I don't have any concerns. Here's mine, I'm one of them. I'm, I'm part of the recall, both of them, no concerns. These are external matters that do not in any way have any bearing on the immense technology that's within these cameras that are brought to bear to give us one of the best photograph experiences I have ever had. I mean, it is, it is the best photograph experience I've ever had at an astonishing price point. And these cameras are a Swiss army knife. They can do anything, they can meet any use case. It's just an absolute joy. I would love to hear your stories so far with the Z8. Whatever stories they are, I don't mind. What's your favorite lenses to shoot with the Z8? Also, if you're planning on buying a Z8 or perhaps something else, please do let me know in the comments below. It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. All right, time to shoot.